Hello there, Richie Stormtrooper here. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me again. Now, I've had a few requests in the comments for, first of all, Happy New Year and sorry for neglecting the channel over the last few months. I'm going to try and kickstart the channel again. I've had a few requests for, quite understandably, for helmet videos because I didn't get quite as far with my tutorials with the helmets. Now, I thought I'd take this opportunity to, I've got to this stage with my new RS Props helmet. Um, assembled, fully assembled and painted to a certain extent, I'll explain in a minute. Um, obviously no lenses in there. I thought I'd look at how to accurately paint a stunt helmet replica. Right then, so first of all when we're talking about painting there are two aspects to painting a helmet. The helmets in the original movie were all spray painted white. The plastic that they were made with wasn't actually white. I've got here, I'll just grab my, this is my ESB, my Empire Strikes back helmet that I use for trooping and you will notice, or well you may or may not notice, a bit dusty there, it's actually all ABS plastic and it's solid white. It's exactly the same material as is used for the armour. Armour is just plain white plastic and the only painting on there, the only paint on there is for the frown, the black frown. And here this vocoder thing, these bits and bobs here, because of course the rest, these bits and bobs, these are stickers, decals. If you want to see a video about the differences between Empire Strikes Back and A New Hope, the episode 4, um, Stormtrooper costumes, the helmets in particular, click on this link now, you can have a look at that. This is actually, with it being plain plastic, it's a really great option. I would probably recommend everybody has this option. Just the plain matching plastic that matches the, the armour. The armour is plain plastic, it's not painted at all. Because it matches and it kind of, put that back up there, it kind of goes t with the idea that people your 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 audience shall we say if you're a trooper if you're going out meeting people carnival or whatever where you're involved with the five of first legion people that see you up close will expect to see what they think they saw on, on screen which is a completely white probably very clean and very very tidy stormtrooper costume they don't really know about all the faults or the worn bits, all the little nooks and crannies that, that we obsessed um, replica replica prop type people um, get obsessed with. So that's one option for, for, for trooping that I think is perfectly valid and perfectly easy. You don't have to worry about painting anything. But in this video we're looking more specifically at using an ABS plastic helmet, a white helmet, to actually re recreate the look of an original helmet. Now the history behind this is that the original helmet, so I'll put some on screen now, some um, pictures on screen. I've got them on my phone as well for reference here for my painting. You will see on pictures like this, there are very clear parts of the helmet you can see that are green. And this is just revealing the original plastic underneath. The studios, the, the, the vac forming was outsourced from the from this, uh, film studios and the people that took on the job were had a lot of green plastic in stock and it's actually um, poly polyethylene PE people um, thought for a long time it was high density high density what was it HD I've forgotten but anyway it's been it been pretty much matched it's Robin's Robin Simon uh, from RS Prop Masters have got the original helmet with the original green plastic. It's completely stripped back. There's no white paint on it anymore and it seems the the green plastic underneath is um, PE material, polyethylene and uh, not what we thought it was, the high density. I'll put it up on screen, I've forgotten. HDP something. But anyway, it's been matched and it's this green polyethylene um, material. It was probably used for the main part of business we all know we're talking about. I don't want to give them any um, for, uh, free advertising. 
um, they were specialists for duck ponds or fish ponds or whatever and canoes and it was what they had in stock rather than order more in more plastic white matching plastic that was reserved just for the hero helmets they were all non-painted they were plain white ABS plastic they were the hero helmets that were for, for close-up work for notably for Han and Luke you know, it looked better and the rest were pretty much a botch job to be honest I mean it's given us that charming thing that we all know and love nowadays and it seems very unsuitable for actually taking paint very difficult to prime there was some probably some kind of red colored primer on there there is evidence of red underneath the white and uh, but it didn't really take very well they were probably painted very quickly not, I don't really know who painted them and where but anyway you can see clearly from these these shots this um, all this um, material by the way is coming from StarWarsHelmets.com uh, credit there use that site There's some big rec gets a big recommendation for me if you want any reference on Star Wars helmets in particular the, the stormtroopers have some great reference material this particular helmet shows perfectly well how the green plastic showed through underneath and it was also um, by by the time they were filming it was it was evident as well so whether you're replicating a helmet as it looks today which may be more battered and more chipped or whether you're replicating something on screen <clears throat> this is actually um, true I don't know how badly damaged this was by the time it was on screen but you can definitely see it on some of the helmets the stunt helmets on the screen especially nowadays in the age of blu-ray and 4k video and back then it wasn't so critical Anyway, so most of you are not, however, going to have a helmet which is made of the original material, original green material. There have been a few runs. Rob and Cy, RS Prop Masters, have done a few runs. Uh, perfect replicas. It's they can be a little bit expensive. They're very difficult to. They're, they're very limited anyway. It's difficult material to to vac form I hear, so they had to actually invest in more machinery to be able to do it. I know other makers have tried and failed. It, it's really difficult to work with unless you have proper industrial vac forming machines. So anyway, you're not generally going to have a green helmet, but you might want to re repli replicate this look, this chipper look. We talk about them as being chipper, chipped helmets, chipped look. Now this is how I went about it, and this is what. I'm going to share with you what people have researched and what people have shared with me, what I've learned from the forums, by the way. Anything you find on, on this channel, you can probably find it by reading the forum First Imperial Stormtrooper Det Detachment at WhiteArmor.net. That's the forum affiliated with the 501st Legion. Go there, talk to the guys. Very friendly lot, knowledgeable, knowledgeable people. That's where I learn everything I know. I'm just trying to condense this here for you. In videos on YouTube and share it here for the wider world. Now, this is a helmet. I don't know why I'm holding that up. I'll put it over here for you. The helmet that I'm working on. This is my RS Prop Masters helmet from the kit, which I use for all the tutorials. And you can see that I have done some subtle replicating of this chipper type helmet. Here you can see, looks like an original. There's some green flashes, some chipping. And the paint work. Now, how did I do it? Here's some more. First of all, you need some primer. Obviously, this is painted. First step is some kind of plastic primer. I just got this from a local, what would you call it, hardware store in the UK. It'd be B and Q in the uh, USA. I don't know, Home Depot. You know the places. This was actually here in Germany. It was Hornbach plastic primer, some kind of paint primer and obviously spray your plastic helmet completely. If I have some pictures of the process I'll, I'll, I'll put them up on the screen now. And The next stage is then to replicate that green, to paint the helmet completely green. You need the an undercoat completely in green and this is what um, our friend, a lot of people know him, R2 Dan Dan from the German um, German garrison here, uh, big collector, big prop maker. Um, most most of you are in the Star Wars prop making community will, will know him. This was his discovery. This was his. He went to a local 
car car body repair whatever uh, workshop where they spray cars and found this really good match to I mean this was all on uh, without seeing the original helmet before just looking on screen and, and guessing and he picked out this I mean you may not be able to get this actual brand Belton but the the main thing here is it's RAL shade 7043 now and of course with the contacts to um, RS prop masters and being able to go and see the actual original helmet Dan was able to go and match this he sprayed a helmet or a piece of plastic took it with him and put it side by side he's got some pictures of the of the sprayed ABS plastic next to the original helmet and it is so close so close it really is an excellent match there have been other colors used that got quite close there's a Halfords spray paint from the UK which is beige khaki it's quite a lot lighter it looks good when you've when you've finished the helmet because there is all smaller areas but it's quite notably a bit lighter it's a good substitute this I've not found anything better than this if you can find something close to 7034 and that shade it's got quite a I don't know how it is on screen but this lid is actually quite a good indicator of what it is so then you've got a helmet and it's completely green so the next stage is then to make it white but not completely white because you want these chipped areas to get that to achieve that you're going to need something to mask off the areas in which you want to appear as chips with now I've got this mask pen this is actually latex the actual brand is called mask pen spelt like that I've got this off eBay it's from the UK it's the sort of thing you find in art supplies stores um, it comes with like a it's like a needle applicator like that you won't be able to see that so I put that over here so you can you know, spread it over a small area and it's liquid latex it sticks to obviously when your when your green layer of paint has dried it sticks to the area that you apply it to and it covers it up completely just like masking just like use masking tape or whatever so when it comes to then spraying the white paint where you have applied this it will not have taken the white paint and this is what happened here here we, here we can see here we can see I put all my I put a big blotch of liquid latex there sprayed the whole helmet white and when it came to uh, after it had dried just peel you can peel away the latex and it leaves underneath it leaves the green chipped areas and it looks for me for my in my opinion it looks just like an original yeah, you, so you use the plastic the white plastic helmet that you have in your kit but you make it look that one bit more accurate just like a a, a real stunt helmet and it's not something that's going to be really glaringly obvious from a few meters away but it's you know it's that one little bit of accurate replica going that one extra stage what one extra step for accuracy now what was I going to say the, about the white shade this is something I've tried various white shades and I settled on again I consulted with Dan again because what Dan doesn't know about stormtroopers it's probably not worth knowing consulted with him again when I came to do this helmet but I pretty much established this the last time when I made um, this helmet this is a helmet I painted ages it's my first attempt at a, at a chipper as you can see here this is actually I call this a, a heavy relic I've been deliberately a lot more subtle with this one I didn't want it to be such a messy paint job and to have le less chipping this is my heavy relic as I call it this has got lots of chipped areas it's very dirty I've scuffed it up the mic tips are battered and bent and notably there are also I don't know if you can appreciate that but on the back there are some quite nasty paint runs now this is 
something you may or may not choose to do. I wanted this to be a warts and all replica, so I went for lots of chipping and also paint runs. Paint runs are achieved very easily. Uh, a lot of people do actually put some kind of um, glue, run some glue underneath as you've, you've painted your green layer and you, you're not painted your white layer yet, they, they apply some kind of glue underneath which will form a bead, like a bead thing, and then spray over it. Personally, I've never gone that route. It replicates a, a, a paint run, but I've just found that if you want a paint run you can pretty much guarantee some paint runs if you hold your aerosol. If you want a nice even application you you hold your aerosol a good i don't know at least 30 maybe half a meter a bit more away and spray evenly so this kind of creates a mist that settles on there and, but if you move your your spray can closer intentionally or unintentionally it's going to apply too much paint to one area it's, it's more uh, concentrated jet so it, it creates paint run, paint runs quite quickly i tried not to make any paint runs on this one. Now I got actually did get a few because I probably got a bit uh, impatient, but that's fine. That's uh, one little one there. But I wanted to make this one a little bit more subtle. So back to the cut, the shade of white then itself. I settle on this one, which is RAL 9010. It's pure white. It's not signal white. So it's a very it's it's not creamy it's not creamy white if you if you see it without any comparison it looks kind of it's a pure white but it's not signal white it's not this really bright appliance white uh, there's another shade um, it's called appliance no signal white I think it's 9014 I'll check the reference for you I actually bought a kind of that to compare at the same time again and I settled on this. It just looks more like the ones on the original helmets. Just, I don't know, try, try paints out yourself, have a look. Maybe you think something will match. This also seems to match better. When I say match, it, it looks right against the ABS armor because your armor is going to be unpainted plain ABS. And it's not, definitely not a bright white. The ABS is slightly creamy yellow. It should be slightly creamier and yellowier than your actual helmet. Um, I just find this one's a good match. Long story short. Now, we I've been talking for quite a long time now. Obviously the next stage on this was to paint, start painting the detail. That's where I'm going to carry on with now. I'm going to do that in the next video. I think we'll leave it there. This is about creating the replica of a chipper helmet. I've got things like this to talk about in the next video, so please stay tuned. I'll do that next time. I've got to um, paint the blue tube stripes on here. I've got some stencils for that. I'll talk about where you can get them. Um, talk about the paints that I'm going to use for the actual painting, what I've used for the traps, the blues for the poo uh, uh, pin, um, tube stripes, excuse me, the greys, etc. All in the next video. I think we'll leave it for there for now. I hope that was interesting. If you did find this useful, please subscribe to the video. Give me a um, comment. Let me know what you're working and what what your projects, what projects projects you're working on at the moment. It all helps. Any comments, likes, and subs subscriptions really help with the algorithm. Let's see if we can build this channel up and keep this community going. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.